Hey, everybody. It's the Drive to School Podcast. I am Pastor Goodman, your host, and my friend Amelia is back. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Good. Thank you for for coming back to hang out. Uh, I, I loved sort of whenever you visit because it's sort of a glimpse into into life as as you're living it. Uh, but we get to sort of see where where our faith actually impacts the world around us because while we we talk about how school's going, so uh, Amelia, how's school going? <laughs> <laughs> it's going good. Um, I actually have a lot of great classes that I love. And there's this one specific one, actually, that we get to discuss the liturgy and hymns um, in not necessarily in a Lutheran setting, but in a definite Christian setting. And it's and it's really fantastic. Uh, one question, though, that has been raised is where is the Holy Spirit in, in worship? Because we talk about um, we actually talk about Lutheran worship and how Christ is present um, in our divine service. But then a lot of people wonder, well, where's the Holy Spirit? I feel like he's with me all the time. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a you know, okay. question that I have. Fair enough. So you go to a, a Christian college, but not necessarily a Lutheran college, which, which is kind of cool because you get to sort of interact with people from sort of a, a much wider variety of, of Christian dominations. Uh, and actually this is, this is going to be one of those places where, uh, especially with sort of uh, a lot of sort of evangelical America or, or Protestant America, Lutherans are going to not not outright disagree, but have a more nuanced approach. Um, and some of it's sort of just in the idea of, of well, Holy Spirit. So spirit, like, can you see a spirit? <laughs> not really. Right. And so like, well, where is he and what is he doing is sort of the question. Um, but honestly, the atheists do this to us about Jesus too, because they'll say, all right, so maybe there was a guy who walked around the Middle East 2000 years ago, but don't tell me that he talks to you. Um, don't, don't tell me that you, you, he, you see him or, or, or he is with you because while well, even Lutherans sort of have to wrestle with this, Christ ascended into heaven and sat down at the right hand of the father. We say this every week in our creed that, that like, if, if Jesus is walking, walking with you and talking with you, that might actually be sort of like a, a really, really good cause to go to the doctor. Um, the Christ has ascended on high. So, so the Holy Spirit even more so because he's invisible. Um, where is he? And if you can't see him, uh, it, it's kind of, kind of got to go by one thing. It's either going to go by his promise or by, by sort of your heart. Um, and this sort of might be the, the sort of two ways. And so you sort of mentioned, you know, somebody sort of feels the Holy Spirit with them all the time. Um, is that kind of, sort of uh, the, the swath of what you're, you're sort of coming across? Yeah, no, that is, that's, that is exactly it. They okay. very concerned, not very concerned, but just, I think scared that the Holy spirit, if they don't feel him and then where is God kind of thing, mm -hmm. be maybe a broader question is where they're coming from. I think that that's actually the, the most important question. Like you, you've somehow just cut right through all of the discussion. Uh, the, the big fancy theological word for this uh, sort of like feeling God in your heart is called enthusiasm. So like if you're enthusiastic about something, you're super upbeat, right? Um, and that's, that's fine. That's awesome. I have ADHD and I really, really go hard at it. But at the same time, um, the, the danger of sort of enthusiasm is like you have to feel it. So like, how do you, how do you know? And what happens if you, if you can't feel it? And so it's going to start to, to shape worship in a certain way. If you have to feel the Holy spirit, because you need to sort of produce that, that sort of emotional reaction. Right. Right. And, and if you don't have that emotional reaction, then you obviously end up having the question of, well, where's God? Why isn't he giving me a feeling right now? A happy feeling. Right. And it sort of leaves you to the uh, tricks of the devil because every single time you need God the most, I guarantee you, he will feel the farthest away. Like it's, it's just reality it, it, in the depths of despair, of doubt, of, of pain, of suffering, of, of cancer, of trauma. Like you, you pick these things and, and like nobody going through them is genuinely sort of like apart from morphine or something like, man, I just feel really great about this whole situation. It must be the Holy Spirit. Um, you, you read the Psalms and it's the same thing. Um, that, that like David in the, the 22nd Psalm that, that Christ cries out to my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Um, if, if it's up to you to sort of feel God in your heart, first you have to deal with the, the, the reality is sometimes we don't. Um, and then you also kind of got to deal with the, the realities of like, um, just about every superhero movie can produce the same 
emotional response in, in most males. You're sort of exempt from this. Uh, you, you can still get down with it if you want to, but like it's a, it's a marketable skill. Like they, they play the music at the right pace. They speak in a, up, in a they, they, they speak in a cadence that builds and you, you start to feel it. And, and well, if, if Captain America can make me feel the same as the Holy Spirit, what is, what does that mean? Is he, is, is Chris Evans God? Mm. Um, <laughs> So, so we're introducing questions and this isn't to just sort of like tear things down, but like, if, if this is worth talking about there, there should be some degree of certainty. Like you're, you're, you're basing your, your rational soul and the resurrection of your body on this. Like, how do you know God is present? Um, and for us as Lutherans, it's, it's because he promised to be. And, and so we're going to look where he promised to be too. Um, and, and this might be important. So the Holy Spirit's job, it, it, the way that, that, uh, the scripture describes it is to bring you to Jesus and Jesus to you. Um, so, so wherever there is, there is sort of a, a, a word of God that is spoken or preached, we can say there, the Lord is being conveyed. The spirit is at work. We also go to the sacraments. So are you baptized? Yeah. Then the spirit is with you. You know this. This is a Bible verse. You have received the Holy Spirit. This is Acts chapter 2. Um, and that's really important because there are going to be some days you feel it. And that's not bad. That's awesome. Like really, if like those days where you just sort of walk out of church and you're like, that that was actually exactly what I needed to hear. I'm not alone. I feel comforted. I feel not afraid. That's awesome. And there are going to be days, just the, the painful reality where you, you walk out and you say, I don't know if that helped. I'm still the same sinner that I was. I still feel the same things that I felt and the things that I'm asking for aren't getting better. So where is God? And the answer that, that uh, is very important for us to understand is he's exactly where he promised to be. He, the Holy spirit is yours in your baptism, whether you feel him or not. Um, and that, that's actually kind of a freeing thing. Are you kind of following me so far? Yeah, I am. I think that I love that we can rely on our baptism like that and that we know that Christ is and God and the Holy spirit is with us. I think another, like, may I ask a, a yeah, follow-up yeah. question from probably their perspective is a lot of them don't believe in, in baptism the same right. way that we do, which is very sad. But um, I think that they would then ask, well, is God not then with me? So the only way to be with God is to be in church would be the mm. next question. Would, so yeah, um, we, we ascribe to the Holy Spirit again, like a fancy word for it is sanctification. Um, it means to make you holy. And so we talk about this in your baptism where you are, you are washed clean, where you are made holy. Like these are Bible verses um, and, and like are, are very just sort of straightforward and, and, and not to, to win an argument with a Baptist, but just sort of to actually find comfort in mostly for yourself um, that, that do you not know that you who have been baptized have put on Christ. Something has happened here and it's, it's yours. Um, when we, we sort of say that, we can say, yes, God is, is most certainly present in church for a purpose. The purpose of church there is, is to, for God to give you good gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation. Um, and then that carries forward because if sanctification means made holy, you are holy now. Um, which means that that God will actually do good works through you, sometimes even without your your knowledge at all. But but the way that that you love your family, love your friends, uh, serve your your community as a student, as as a, as a daughter, as a Christian, as as a citizen, uh, there we get to say um, Ephesians two ten says that that uh, these good works that you're doing, God has prepared beforehand that you should walk in them. You actually get to find then the Holy Spirit at work caring for the poor. You get to find the Holy Spirit at work. Uh, as when when children just receive good gifts from their parents, uh, there the Holy Spirit takes an active role uh, in in something that that uh, is lived out daily in the lives of Christians. Because now, when I get to sort of look at myself in the mirror, and and I get to really really struggle with the the good works thing, because all I see is is sort of like I should have been a better father. I should have put my phone down. I should have paid closer attention. I wish. I wish. I wish. And, and then I get to say. First of all, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. And I know that he does. He forgives my sins. He forgives yours too. So, so he takes away all the bad, but he has still worked good. Um, miraculously, because I am awful at this, my kids are, are wonderful people. They, they're, they're, they're baptized. They, they hear the word of the God, the Lord. They believe it. They, they love and they live. And I don't understand how I haven't messed them up way worse. But there I get to find, again, the Holy Spirit. But I, I want to do it based on on his promises though, because whenever I start to put it back on me, like, well, 
you, you get to ask those those like what if questions in the dark of of night when things don't don't look or feel quite right. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I do know what you mean. And I think that is a really good response because in reality, he's with us, helping us, even if we don't feel him or see him, but he's where he promised to be, both right. in church and outside of church. Absolutely. So, I, and, and you can do this in, in other things too. Uh, like, I, I think if it if God is real, and, and I'm willing to sort of put a lot of emphasis on that, um, then we should be able to treat reality as real regardless. So, like, do you feel right now in your heart, Amelia, the country of China? No. It's just burning. Is it? Mm-hmm. Is it still real? Yeah. Like your AirPods came from China. You can, you can know China is real. And, and like that, that's good. That's kind of freeing because I don't know that I want to have to feel the entire universe in my heart for it to be real. Um, <laughs> and in the same way, like I, I don't know that I want to limit the Holy Spirit's work to what I can see or feel. Mm. I, I actually, I really, really want a Holy Spirit that can do things for me when I don't feel good. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of a matter of, that was a really, I like that point because it's almost like putting uh, God in a box in a sense you're you're put you're putting god into human constraints almost mm-hmm. which like if you want to play irony of ironies is sort of one of the reasons that that some of your friends might struggle to believe in baptism uh as, as an efficacious work of god <laughs> maybe yeah so he, we're, we're we're willing to say though god puts himself in a box and, and the the good part is he promises where that box is like god actually mm-hmm. does limit himself god became man God of God, light of light, very God of very God, was born of a virgin. God yeah. limited himself so that we could receive him. And in the same way, the Holy Spirit, who like, I don't know if he's in the room or not because I can't see spirit. Uh, he says, I'm in the font where the word is being preached. I, I'm, I'm in the font where in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit is, I'm there. When, when the, the uh, pastor says, take, eat, this is my body, the Holy Spirit is there. And, and when Christians who have heard the word and believe it go out and live their lives, the Holy Spirit is there working. Um, and, and it's actually supposed to be a really, really freeing thing. Uh, it's one of the things that makes Lutherans feel real boring, though. Um, like, it, it is. And like, we, we can sort of deal with this. Um, that, that I don't need to sort of be entertained at church for me to think that church works. I, I know it works because God promised it works. Um, and that doesn't mean that I want church to be boring. But if if somebody tells me church is boring, like I'm never going to get upset about that. Right. I'm, I'm actually really okay with it. Yeah. Otherwise, church becomes a show. But, well, and, I mean, yeah. Do you want the dentist yeah. to like be entertaining or do you want him to be good at his job? Good at his job. <laughs> like that's it's, entertaining is fine. Like tell me a joke. That's cool. But like you, you, you got to drill in my mouth. So be good at that first. Um, and that's why you're at the dentist. Like you're not there just to hear his jokes. You actually need your teeth worked on. And in the same way, like it's great if your pastor is, is mildly entertaining. Um, but he's, he's, he's sent by God to, to preach, to forgive your sins, to, to give you the sacraments. And, and that's sort of what we circle everything around is you get to explore the liturgy. Uh, it's actually one of those really, really clear cut things when we sort of fall back on the historic liturgy, like over and over again, have you noticed sort of a pattern in this as you studied it? You, you told me you spent some time in it. What kind of patterns did you pick out in the yeah. liturgy? It, in, in a sense, well, a lot of the times it's singing and, and words from the Bible, and it's kind of just a pattern of Christ's death and resurrection, his life on earth, and he's with us, like, in an eschatological sense. Ooh, almost. big word. What's that mean? <laughs> um, so the eschaton is like the end times, right? And so eschatology is the study of that, and not just, it's Christian end times, right, where Christ mm-hmm. is both the end and the beginning at the place where he died on the cross. And yet he's still coming, but comes every day, every uh, Sunday at church too. It's like this whole paradox thing. Right. But, but it, it's actually, it's kind of freeing though, because when we talk about time as Christians, we talk about it in terms of Jesus. Like it's, it's literally just the Sunday school answer, right? So like, where, where's the center of all time based on what you just told me? Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah, it's the cross where he died for us. That, that, like even the sun was blotted out from the sky. Like they made a, a real point of saying like time begins and ends here. And from here, all things are sort of encompassed from before let there be light unto the last great day. Everything for us is, is Jesus. But that means like if you sort of feel like you're stuck in between things, you're not, you're not stuck anymore. 
Yeah, I love that. It really, church service really puts us into time almost, or takes us outside of time with Christ. Mm -hmm. And I need that because like there, there are some Sundays where like, I just, I'm waiting for something and it needs to hurry up and get here. Um, there, there are some Sundays where I feel aimless. Um, like I, I remember, um, honestly college where like all I wanted to do was go out and be a grown up, And I was like, that's cool. You see all the problems in the world and you can't do anything about them for three more years, two more years. And you're just like, well, what do I do? Um, even just, I've, I've visited people now who, who just, they want to die because they, they hurt so bad and they know where they're going but they just get me there and some of them are 95 and and struggled through loss of a spouse and and remember the great depression and everything else and are just ready for their lord and some of them are are 15 and just sort of struggling just to get through the day themselves but but you get to sort of say here you are not just sort of cut off and waiting but but here god comes to you in a meaningful way and you can know it you can you can measure it even when you're at your very very lowest because you don't need to sort of feel your way up to god you get to say he's promised to be here and, and he's promised to be in this thing so that whether I feel it or not, it's working. And I stop, I stop having to sort of measure dying flesh's feeling as, as the thing that works because that, that's what we are as, as sinners, right? Like we don't point true north, which is why we, we really love sinning so much. It just feels good. Um, there's, there's other signs of it too. So it's, it's winter in Iowa. You, you're, you're doing okay. But um, it's, it's uh, a couple of weeks ago, it was 30 below. Um, if I went outside with no coat and eventually stopped feeling cold and it was 30 below, is that a good sign or a bad sign? Probably a bad sign. Yeah. I mean, that, that means I'm dying. I, I, I yeah. don't feel cold anymore though. So like, great. It must be some, no, it, it, it just means that you're not feeling the, the things you ought to feel right now. And sometimes that happens because of what you're going through. Sometimes that happens because of, of what, what the environment you're in. Sometimes it happens just sort of out of callousness and we're not paying attention, but What's real is still real. It's still 30 below, so get a coat. And, and Christ is still present in the worship service because the Holy Spirit is present in the worship service to bring Christ through time and space from the right hand of the Father to you and, and your church, to me and my church, so that we don't have to go to Israel, so that we don't have to go to Jerusalem, so that we don't have to ascend into the right hand of the Father just to be near God, but God comes to us. And, and this is the Holy Spirit's job. It actually makes uh, the Holy Spirit for us almost like the paramount person of the Trinity that we chiefly deal with. Because like we cannot get to the Son unless unless we have the Spirit. Yeah. Does that kind of does I, that kind of make sense? Yeah, that 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 makes so much sense. And I, I think that's so easily overlooked in in a lot of ways. Like that, oh, we, we don't really have the Holy Spirit. No, we we do. We put so much emphasis on him. He's so mm -hmm. important. And also I it's like kind of separating him almost in a sense, from the Trinity, which feels dangerous. Like they are separate and distinct, but they're also unified in one. And the Holy Spirit is bringing us Christ, but Christ is also like there. coming with the Holy Spirit. It's, yeah. it's a togetherness. Yeah. If you have the Holy Spirit, you have Christ. And if you have Christ, you have the Father. Um, and you cannot have one without the rest. But at the same time, um, it, it's it, it's true of just about anything. Like if you're hungry and you want food, what room of the house should you go into? The kitchen. If you go looking for food in the bathroom, like, I don't know what you're going to find, but don't eat it. Um, and, and like, re really though, like in the same way, God promises, you can find me here in the font. You can find me here in the word. You can find me here in the supper. Look there and, and, and there I'll be. But if you go looking other places, you might find something, but it might not actually be what you think it is. So we have to look in the right places, places yeah. where he promised to be. Yeah. And there we fall back on the word. Does that yeah. kind of help? Awesome. Yeah, so much. <laughs> Very cool. Well, thanks for hanging out, Amelia. We should uh, we should do it again soon. Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. Have a good one. Thank you.